as you are joining, please do feel free to keep putting in the chat a quick hello. How are you and where you're joining us from? It's great to see everybody's um, locations on the globe. We are today in this 90 minute webinar with the topic of how to use Settle In in cultural orientation delivery. We will be talking about the Settle In resources and how we might be able to utilize those resources throughout resettlement. However, CORE does have a focus on cultural orientation, so we will think about things from a cultural, cultural orientation lens as well. We have a lot of CORE staff on the call with us today. My name is Amy Franz. I am the, training, the Senior Training Coordinator here at CORE. Um, I am joined by my co-pilot, Karin, who is our education officer. You will see them in the chat helping out with uh, pasting in information, um, helping with any technical issues. We also have four participants of uh, four staff members joining us from the Settle In team. We have Analia, Adele, Yana, and Maria. You will see them in the chat or in the Q&A helping to answer your questions. And a little bit later, you'll be able to hear Adele and Maria sharing from their experience working on some of the different uh, Settle In properties. We have a really packed 90 minutes today. Right now, we're in this quick five-minute welcome. Our goal is to spend about 25 minutes looking at the Settle In digital properties, looking at the website, the app, the Facebook and YouTube um, opportunities, resources available, looking at the features of those digital properties. Then I will take a quick little break and hopefully finishing up with a lot of time at the end to focus on scenarios and thinking about how can we use these Settle In resources to support various groups of newcomers. And then wrapping up at the end to answer any outstanding questions, um, reinforce any messages and help put you on a path towards using these resources successfully. Our objectives today, we hope that you leave today understanding the purpose of the Settle In properties, including some of the differences between the website, the app and the Facebook pages. We hope that you feel confident at the end of this webinar to locate and access those digital properties. And our goal is that you can identify at least two new ways to incorporate Settle In into your CO sessions or into other resettlement services. Truly, I would love if you leave with 10, 12, 15 new ideas on how to use Settle In, but the goal is two. Some additional items for today's session. This webinar is being recorded. There is a live transcript available. We have enabled the closed captions. So you can click on that CC button in your Zoom toolbar and that will allow you to uh, see the captions if that's needed. This webinar recording will be shared out to you within at least a week. Our goal is always to get the resources out as soon as possible, um, but we are a, a small team here. So be patient with us and give us a few days to get those things out to you after the webinar. We will be sharing a lot of information and websites with you today, but we won't be putting all of the links in the chat because we don't want you to get distracted and move away from the website. We want you to stay here in the webinar with us, but all of the links that we share will come out to you in the follow-up materials. As always with CORE, your participation really does matter to us. We do ask that you use the Q&A feature and you will see that um, in your Zoom toolbar with two little, um, two little speech bubbles overlapping. Use that feature to ask any questions so that our CORE staff can organize those questions and help to answer. And then use that chat feature to share your opinions and discuss. When you are in the chat, make sure that your two line says everyone. I have to admit that I have on occasion started a webinar sending messages only to my co-hosts, thinking I was messaging the entire webinar audience, but was only sending them to my co-hosts. So do make sure you update that two line in your, um, in your chat window. Throughout the webinar today, you will see me and our core staff looking in different directions. This is because we are using multiple monitors where we have written papers um, 
as well available for us. So please know we are with you, we are focused, we just might be looking in a different direction. Also, I will be using a lot of different vocabulary to talk about our refugees. You might hear me say newcomer, client, applicant, refugee, all of these just to cover the, the vast um, difference between some of our job positions and the different ways that we refer to these individuals. As we are getting started here, I would love for you to pop into that chat and share what do you already know about the Settle-In resources? Um, what have you heard? What have you seen? What do you already know about Settle-In before we start this webinar? Yeah, take a look at the chat myself to see all of these great, wonderful welcomes from everybody joining us. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, Kristen, some of some of the settle in expansion was in part due to the APA program. Absolutely. Joseph settle in is available in many languages. We'll be looking at the difference between the languages available on the website, languages available on the app, languages available on Facebook, um, and hopefully very easy to navigate. That is the goal. Absolutely, Joanna, this is an online platform to provide foundational information to newcomers. With fact sheets in many different languages, we have a highly educated um, audience with us of participants today. Wonderful, wonderful. Absolutely, you can choose your language, Lynette. Nadal, absolutely, this is something we will highlight today, Nadal, that the videos are the exact same as the fact sheets. Fabulous. Keep putting those comments in the chat um, as we move into our first section here. We will, after the webinar, take all of those things shared in the chat, collect them into some notes to share out with you all. So what is Settle In? Settle In is CORE's multilingual, multi-platform information source for newcomers who are resettling to the United States. The platform strives to meet newcomers where they are at their level. As far as the digital properties, the resources available, there is a website under the Settle In umbrella. There is a mobile app. I've seen a few people mention that in the comments in the chat already. And we also do have some uh, Facebook presence. We have two separate Facebook pages and some um, additional information to share about Facebook with you today. As you are joining this, this webinar, we want to start off with emphasizing the why behind Settle In. Why, of course, CORE wants you to use Settle In because we manage Settle In. So of course we believe you should use it. But truly, like why deep down should we be using Settle In with newcomers? These properties really are designed specifically for newcomers um, using Visually, visual simplicity, clear design, thoughtfulness and consideration to low literacy or low digital literacy skills, and also thinking about cultural and linguistic adaptability. CORE does pride ourselves on incorporating user feedback from both providers and refugees, and the resources on Settle In do go through a thorough vetting and review process to make sure that the translations are accurate. All of the information on Settle In is based on the cultural orientation, objectives, and indicators, those COONIs. If you work in cultural orientation, you know those COONIs are the guidepost, the framework for providing education pre-departure and post-arrival to refugees who are resettling in the United States. The information on Settle In is very broad and meant to be used nationwide. In order to cover the whole United States, sometimes that information is not deeply detailed. However, you can use Settle In resources for that broad foundational information and then add your additional local information when you are working with newcomers. Settle In also supports consistent messaging about life in the United States. 
we have on this phone, on this webinar today, providers from across the globe. When we are using the same resources, we are able to provide the same messages in Istanbul, in Malaysia, in Central Africa, and then the same messages on the domestic side, wherever the, the refugee is resettling. These digital platforms also help to put refugees at the center of their own learning, giving control to the refugee and helping to encourage self-sufficiency and encourage that newcomer to seek more information independently. And it also reinforces those messages that we share in cultural orientation, outside of cultural orientation. We always love to emphasize the data as well when we talk about why behind our properties. In fiscal year 23, from the research, the surveys that were just done this last fall, the data that CORE collected showed that 98% of refugees who were departing from a resettlement support center overseas were exposed to settle-in resources in some way. When that was calculated out, it came to, we estimate this to be over 50,000 refugees who were leaving those resettlement support centers who had been exposed or utilized those settle-in resources in some way. We emphasize this because we want to um, encourage all of the domestic and overseas providers to see the wide um, impact that settlement resources can have as we go across the, the continuum of resettlement. The first piece that we are going to be looking at during this webinar is some features of the website. Um, I am joined this for me this afternoon, I'm joined during this webinar by um, Adele, who is one of our digital content managers. And so Adele is going to take us through a short explanation of some of the website features. Thank you, Amy. So the most important sections for newcomers on the website are the life in the U.S. section and the U.S. resettlement process sections. Under the life in the U.S. section, there are multiple topics such as employment, housing, education, and much more. Each topic page it, pages have a page text, a video, an audio podcast, and a downloadable PDF. Under the U.S. resettlement process, there is a separate page for each of the six steps in the resettlement process. Again, each page has page text, a video, audio podcast, and downloadable PDFs. Next, there is the multilingual resource library section, which collects all the Facebook PDFs, audio, and videos from all the sections on the website so you can sort and filter through by topic or type of resource and it makes it more easily accessible to access the materials. And lastly, there are 12 languages available on the Settle-in website. You can see the languages located on the right side of the website. The languages include Arabic, Burmese, Dari, English, Farsi, Kinyarwanda, Pashto, Russian, Somali, Spanish, Swahili, and Ukrainian. CORE works closely with funders, resettlement leadership, and others when determining language needs for the website. Most resources are available in all 12 languages, but a few languages such as Farsi and Somali do not have all resources available on the website. Let's look at some more sections of the Settle-in website. So the About Settle-In page is an overview page that includes links to all of the Settle-In properties, including direct links to download the Settle-In app and links to both Settle-In Facebook pages. It also includes an About video, which is a great way to introduce Settle-In to newcomers. The next se section is the Help Center. It's a newer, Settle in initiative. It contains information that goes beyond the initial 90 day resettlement period. Although in a more limited number of languages, the Help Center articles are often based on questions from newcomers or more timely issues such as immigration status, change announcements from the US government. 
there are only five languages available in the Help Center articles. It's based on the funding received for this expended service. Now, Amy will navigate us through the Settlement website. Thanks so much, Adele. I am so appreciative to have my co coworkers here with me today to give me a, a break in my talking. Let me take a drink of my water and my coffee. Sherry, I have to say that's amazing that that the the picture we have on settle in the present the presenter is you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to pull our website over here to share and Karen, if you could just give me a thumbs up that you can see my website. So I have shared my whole screen, perfect. Like Adele was saying, the website has multiple different sections. The most important sections for your newcomers will be the life in the US and the US resettlement process sections. You will see under each that there are multiple different topics. And then each topic will open up an independent page. For example, if I open up the employment page, I'm going to have a video here that I'm able to uh, open up to listen to, to watch, to share with my clients or my applicants. If I change my language, for example, I change to Kenya Rwanda, that video is also going to change the language. This is a quick way to access the multilingual videos if you need to share them with clients or applicants in your space. But I do need to change myself back to English. I am not a, a speaker or reader of Kenya Rwanda. As I scroll down, I will see that there is a full text on the page. That text is the same information being shared in the video. That text is also the same information available as a downloadable PDF. Again, that text is the same information available as an audio file. This allows you as the provider to customize for whatever your client needs. If your client does not read and write in their native language, but we have the language available, they can listen to the page. They can watch the video and listen to the video. When I click on download, it will automatically download that file to my download section, which I can then open, print, share with my clients, with my applicants, um, and move on from there. We do also have the multilingual resource library. This is very much intended for us who are in this webinar today, the service providers, this section of the website collects all of the fact sheets, all of the videos, all of the podcasts into one place so that you can filter by topic. For example, employment. If I give it a moment, right now it's going to pull up just the English because my English is selected here, but it pulls up both fact sheets that are available under employment for English. It pulls up both of the audio podcasts and it pulls up both of the videos. If I were to change my language here, keeping employment on the left, changing my language on the right, um, I need to change to something that uses the Latin alphabet. If I change to an Arabic script, I become completely lost. When I change to Somali, we will see now that I have the fact sheets available, which are the Somali translations, the podcasts available, and the videos available in that language. Let me come back up to the top here. Another piece that Adele talked about is this About Settle In page. That page is really to help us as providers to have all of these links in one place, as well as hosting some information to introduce newcomers to settle in. Finally, the Help Center, which is that new initiative. This initiative of CORE is provided in less languages based on the specific funding. It does provide information that goes beyond 90 days. For example, if I pull up employment on the Help Center, these are pieces that are not included inside of the cultural orientation, objectives, and indicators. 
it is not necessary for all newcomers to the United States to learn about observing Ramadan at work. But this is a question that has been asked many times on the Facebook pages, so a Help Center page was developed based on that. Uh, it's not important, it's not, mm, Morgan, I see that. We're on the website, can we access the audio for clients? So let me pop back over to the homepage in just a moment and I'll, I'll show you one more time. All of the topics on the Settle In Help Center are items that go beyond the initial 90 days or the initial resettlement period and help to answer further questions. Let me head back to our main Settle In page. Morgan, if I open up a topic, for example, let me open up the housing topic. I do have the video here right away, which does have the audio. Further down, I have this section that says, listen to this page. If I click on this segment, which says, listen to this page, it will pop up the audio file. These audio files are also available to be downloaded. If I change my language up here, for example, I change myself to Spanish, that video now has changed to the Spanish language video. And Oh, here we don't have the audio available, but we do have the page that you could print out as the PDF. All right. I know that this is a really quick introduction. Our goal today is to give you some information about the properties and then encourage you to explore them more outside of this webinar. I do want to move myself back over to talk about the app so that we don't lose out on our time later for um, talking about using Settle In with clients. Colin, I just wanna take one moment to pause. We're about 20 minutes through our webinar. Has there been anything big in the Q&A that we should um, talk about? Um, yeah, we're okay for now. We had a couple of questions that are being answered by Analia, so we can move forward. Perfect, thank you so much. The next piece of Settle In that we do want to demonstrate and talk a little bit about for you today is the app. The app is designed to be an on-the-go companion to the website. It has the same information as the website, but it is just formatted in a different way. The app is available on iOS or Apple devices, Android, and we also have a website version of the app, which is very helpful for using in a classroom setting or when you are sitting side by side with a client and a laptop. Important features, for us to know about the app. Multiple topics are available on the app. These are the same topics that you will see on the Settle In website. If, for example, we look at the topic of working in the United States, this topic will break out into multiple individual lessons. Those lessons do include videos, images, text, or quizzes, and quizzes are the, the exciting thing that are not available on the website, but are available through the app. If we go into the app and we look at the settings, there is a great feature in here that we can utilize of instructor mode, um, and I'll give you a demonstration on that in just a moment. There are 10 languages available in the app, we change those languages by jumping into the settings. I'll demonstrate that for you in just a moment. There is a question when you first open the app asking you if you are located inside the United States or outside of the United States. That question actually changes which topics are available. And that is based on whether on the domestic cultural orientation objectives and indicators or the overseas COONIs. Again, I will show you that in just a moment. And then that instructor mode. The instructor mode can be super valuable for us as providers because it does allow us to jump through the lessons without completing information in a linear fashion. Um, I do want to, we always want to be student-centered here at CORE. So we are just asking if you would prefer to see the app demonstrated on the smartphone, or if you would prefer to see the website version of the app, Colin, go ahead and launch that poll 
and we'll give about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds for everybody to answer that question. Um, this is also a way that we, my brain just went completely blank. Mukata, I see that Nicole phone app. I was gonna say, this is a way that we also make sure you are still with us. You are still awake. We have not put you to sleep over the last 26 minutes. Fabulous, lots of great engagement. A heavy emphasis towards the app. Mm, Nadal, I appreciate that very much. I see that Analia did make a, a reply to you in the chat, and we will follow up with you after, after the webinar to see if we can get any additional information from you. All right, um, Karin, go ahead and end that poll. Heavily, I do see that we are weighed over towards a demonstration of the app. So let me pull the app up on my device. This morning, I attempted to do this, and it um, went a little sideways on me. So please be patient while I share from my phone. Also, do not judge my, my games if they happen to pop up. I have my phone on silent, but hopefully um, nothing, nothing um, embarrassing or um, untoward will pop up for you. I've got the app here located on my home screen, so I am going to pop that open. There's going to be a, just a slight delay between my talking and the app sharing here. The first screen that we see in the app is asking me to choose my language. Um, I do have to choose English, otherwise I will be completely lost for the next five minutes. And then I will see that first question of if I am in the United States. I want, I am going to click no at this moment just to demonstrate for you some of the topics and how they change. Then I hit my continue there. Um, there is just a brief introduction, some information about the app. I'm going to click skip to jump back into the full app here. Again, that website version, the desktop version of the app looks almost identical to the, the phone mobile app that I'm showing you right now. This is the screen that you saw in the, in the screenshot just a few moments ago. Because I clicked that I am outside of the United States, this topic of traveling to the United States appears. Let me open that topic up here. Now, at this moment, if I want to go to one of these further, oops, excuse me. Um, okay, my brain just did a hard restart. At this moment, if I wanted to go to some of the further information, the app might block me from going further because it's not set yet for an instructor. This segment on traveling to the United States does not appear if I click that I am inside the United States because I don't need to learn about the IOM bag when I am already in the United States. I'm going to open up the settings on the bottom here to show you how. When I change this question, are you in the United States? Let me click there. I'm going to change my answer to yes. I'm going to hit back and head back to our main screen. And you will see that travel segment has disappeared. This is done purposefully so that some information that is not necessary in the United States no longer appears. Let me open up for us today the segment on health and hygiene. Each of these sections, again, will open up into multiple lessons. When I open up a lesson, I am able to swipe through the slides. If the app were in a different language, these pieces would be in the language selected. And then at the very end, oops, I thought that one would get me to a quiz. At the very end, I will see an option for a quiz. These are very helpful to use with a newcomer side by side. If you are doing remote cultural orientation, you could screen share the desktop version of the quiz and use them for brief assessments 
doing your cultural orientation sessions. I'm just going back, back, back to get back to my main screen. Inside of the settings, again, I want to show you where we have the option to change the language here. If I click on that segment, I have my choices of language. Let me head back. And if I click on that instructor mode, again, if I turn on instructor mode, it gives me more freedom to move through the app, not in a linear fashion, so that I can jump to, the, to any segment I want to look at with my client. All right. Let me get myself back over to my PowerPoint here. The last piece that we want to talk about today as far as the, the big information about what is Settle In, um, we want to introduce you to a little bit of Settle In Facebook. We do have together with us today some of our digital community liaisons from Settle In Facebook. They are the smiling faces who manage the posts, the live events, and all of the communication with newcomers that happens through our Facebook channels. Um, I'm going to pass the conversation over to my coworker, Maria, and she will walk us through a little bit of information here. Thank you so much, Amy. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about Settle in Facebook. So, Core launched two Facebook pages in 2022 and 2021. The main Settle In page is available in English, Dari, and Pashto, and includes some information specific for Afghans, but also information that can benefit any other newcomers who speak English. Settle In for Ukrainians primarily serves Ukrainian humanitarian parolees and is available in Ukrainian, Russian, and some English. Because the main Settle In Facebook page now includes all information in English, newcomers from all backgrounds can benefit from this information with the help of interpreters. Facebook does offer auto translation, but these translations are not always accurate or reliable. The Facebook pages provide trusted information to newcomers through posts, digital community liaisons, live events, and direct messaging. Digital community liaisons are core staff who post content on the Facebook pages, answer direct messages, and assist with live events. Both pages have nearly daily posts and recurrent live events about a variety of topics. Recent post topics uh, and live events include understanding taxes, adult education, diversity and cultural adjustment and many more. There are also multiple options for direct messaging. Live events are streamed live on Facebook, but then hosted on YouTube with playlists of events in English, Dari, Pashto, Ukrainian, Russian, and Spanish. YouTube also hosts all the videos from the Settle In website, organized by language. Finally, YouTube also includes videos for some languages like Tigrinya, where the full Settle In content is not available, but sp specific videos have been translated. Amy? <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. Um, again, so much appreciation to my core coworkers for joining me and joining all of us today in this webinar to help share this information. We are just about to take our brief break. Karin, before we take our break, is there anything pressing or vital or important that you see in the Q&A that we should touch on before we come back? No, I think we're good until we come back. Fabulous. So um, I have 135 on my screen. So we will come back at 40. I will put up a timer for five minutes, stretch your legs, get some coffee, get some chai. And then we will be back to talk about how now, how can we use these resources to benefit newcomers? As we are coming back, I do want to come to one question that I saw from Kathleen in the Q&A. Um, Kathleen asked if there is a way of having closed captioning of English or other languages on the videos in order to know what is being said in those videos. The information in the videos is identical from language to language. 
So if you watch the English version and then you put up maybe the Somali version or the um, Farsi version, the um, Burmese version, the, you'll be able to find that same clip inside of those videos. The, the video itself is identical, just with the different language um, audio added. I do want us to come back and spend the rest of our time together um, talking about then how, how should we use or how could we use Settle In with our clients, with our newcomers um, overseas or domestically in the United States. Because there are so many different resources, it allows a lot of flexibility to use Settle In in a lot of different ways. When I'm saying resources, I'm talking about the website, the app, Facebook, YouTube, the videos, the audio, the downloadable PDFs, all of those different pieces I'm kind of lumping together under this idea of resources. When we think about resettlement, um, what I'm presenting here is just a very few number of the steps that go into the resettlement timeline just to help get you thinking about how Settle In could be used or integrated throughout the process. For example, when clients are coming in, um, when applicants are coming in for initial interviews and asking about processes or procedures, fact sheets or videos about the resettlement process could be shared. During medical screening, when applicants have questions about the medical care available in the United States, um, Staff could refer applicants to the app or to the web page. Of course, during CO, there's always going to be chances to use the resources. During that initial home visit, if you're working with clients during that first home visit, helping to um, download the app, explaining how to use the app to review some of that foundational information about the United States. If your organization has things like an employment specialist, or an education specialist using those settle in resources to help uh, review key information alongside the newcomer. Clients can always be referred to the Facebook pages or the help center to also look for information to answer more detailed questions. And this timeline does not cover all of the steps. Um, your client or your applicant's timeline might include steps um, that aren't here, or this might include steps that don't happen in your organization. But hopefully with this just quick, quick timeline, you can see that these resources could be used outside of cultural orientation across the entire continuum of resettlement. CORE does have a lot of suggestions for how to use Settle In. Um, we are going to briefly talk about a few of them. And then we will be asking you as participants to share your own experiences and your own knowledge and ideas. Um, and then finally, we will be looking at some scenarios today of different groups of newcomers and thinking about how Settle In could be used with those specific newcomers. I'm going to be talking here for just a brief moment. And I apologize because I really don't like to just talk at people during a webinar, um, but this is kind of my, my main content to share with you today. Everything that I will be talking about is coming to you in a written format after the webinar. We encourage people always to incorporate Settle In before, during, and after CO sessions to introduce topics, to review information, to assess understanding, the English versions of any of those materials can be used together with an interpreter to help prepare the interpreter and provide a shared understanding of the concept if that interpreter is newer to resettlement. Settle in resources are there to support newcomers to find answers to questions they have, which maybe go beyond your scope of work. For example, you have a question about the asylum process for Ukrainian humanitarian parolees, and you don't know, um, the Facebook page or the help center might be a place where you can look alongside your client to find that information. We don't have the time to answer every single question. So in this way of using Settle In Resources, 
you are not having to recreate or research for that information on your own. Settle-in resources can absolutely be used for assessment. Those interactive quizzes in the app could be used during CO sessions to help assess understanding in a fun, learning-oriented way. We also feel that those our resources encourage newcomers to take control of their own learning while reinforcing the information that they have heard in overseas or domestic cultural orientation and helping to um, avoid some of the miscommunications and the misunderstandings, um, that misinformation, which does get spread. Settle In also lets you customize to your specific client or learners. Being able to have that wide variety of resources, the video, the audio, the text, the app, Settle In can help you to customize CO sessions, sitting side by side with a client during one-on-one, -on -one, screen sharing with a client during remote. Learners with high digital literacy could explore app topics on their own, while you as a CO provider maybe are working with some, some newcomers who have lower digital literacy. Of course, we hope that you'll share the resources, the website, the app, the Facebook pages, share them with newcomers, but also with your wider community of service providers. CORE does have specific multilingual promotional materials that you can use for sharing. And um, I'll show you those briefly at the very end of this webinar. And then we always encourage you to follow the Facebook pages, follow the YouTube channels, so that when new videos or live events are released, it will pop up as a notification for you or you have easy, quick access to those materials. Everything that I just kind of shouted at you for the last few moments will come to you in a written format as a list of suggestions following this webinar. Before we look at um, some scenarios, I would love to hear from you because you have a lot more experience out in the field than, than even we do here at CORE. Uh, because you are on the ground working with those clients on a daily basis. So we are wondering how are how are some of what are some of the ways that you have used settle in with newcomers? Some ways that you have used settle in with um, your clients, with your applicants. If you just take a moment and share in the chat, um, we'd love to share some ideas. Then we'll collect those together to share out after the webinar. Ala is sharing the videos. Ala, are you sharing those videos while you're teaching? Are you sharing them before CO, after CO? How are you sharing those videos out to your, to your clients? Absolutely, Kathleen, using the videos and also using some of the suggested activities and creating your own activities based on the video, absolutely. Ala, yep, using them while teaching CO. A lot of responses here. Robinson using the videos. Arjumand using the videos during CO. Absolutely sharing them when teaching. I really want to encourage you to share them after, maybe as a homework or a follow-up. Share them before. Um, encourage other people at your, your location to also be sharing those, those materials when they have um, appointments or consultations with the clients or the applicants. Yasmin is using settle in doing every CO session. Fabulous. I'm going to give just about 10 more seconds while I take a drink of coffee to see if we have any more thoughts to share before we jump into some more conversation. Erin, I love this comment that using settle in is so versatile. So when there is downtime, encouraging your newcomers to guide themselves on certain topics, Absolutely. Jalan mostly using the videos and then using that video to summarize the information. Absolutely. Ah, Shamir, this is something we'll talk about in just a moment. For those with lower levels, focusing on the pictures, pausing every few points to talk about what did we see in those images? Um, what did we see in that video? Even if we don't have it in the specific language, you can absolutely use it on mute and just watch the videos to have conversations based on those. 
Yasmin, pausing to ask questions or summarize, absolutely, and encouraging participants to download the app. Keep those ideas coming through in the chat. Um, we will collect all of the things that are shared in the chat for sharing after the webinar. Um, the last section that we are going to be spending today for about the next 20 minutes um, is sharing some ideas for different learners. We are going to be looking together at a few different scenarios of learners. We are going to be thinking about, um, I'm jumping past myself. The, the scenarios and the situations that we are going to look at are very, very broad so that they can apply to all of the people who are here in our webinar today, domestic, overseas, um, those who directly provide CO and those who are working in a different capacity. Many of the strategies that I hope we talk about today could be used for a variety of different scenarios. So please don't think that we are telling you this is the one way you must use Settle In. We are just trying to get your brain thinking and hopefully give you a few more ideas to, to put into your toolbox. We'd love if you will continue to type in the chat and share your ideas. Uh, this is the time that we would, we would encourage you to be as vocal as possible. We know that our organizations across the globe work with a lot of non-literate clients or clients who have low or no digital literacy skills, right? This is a struggle that we see across the United States. It's a struggle that we see from all of our different um, resettlement support centers. So if we're thinking about Settle In and these clients who have no literacy or no digital literacy, what thoughts would you have? What ideas would you have about how we could use Settle In with these clients, with these applicants? Feel free to take a moment to think and then share some ideas in the chat. Karen, I'm gonna grab my annotations so that I can grab these things from the chat to share with, with everybody. So Natalie, absolutely printing out those handouts, especially when somebody has no digital literacy, yep, printing out the PDFs. Tony using the pictures, 100%. Um, I do see this note in here from Ala about some of the videos being a little bit maybe um, less inclusive needing a little bit of an update to be tone appropriate. Absolutely understand that. I hope that you would still see a lot of benefit from using those images, even though they might need something added to them um, for your specific group of learners. Hillary, teaching a topic together with the use of interpreters, 100%, playing a video in the local language when it's available, encouraging participants to download the app, listening to that video by itself. Shamir, yep, I love this. Watching the YouTube videos together as the class, focusing on the graphics. We're talking about travel to the United States, watching that video from the travel section, and then thinking, what do you see in this video happening? What does this make you think about? Erin, this is one of my favorite things to, to share, encouraging learners who have some digital literacy skills to teach each other how to navigate Settle In. Truly, this is so um, vital for learning. I always will share that I was awful at algebra. I was awful at mathematics through 13 years of education. But when I started to teach high school English learners, algebra, I finally understood algebra. When we teach somebody how to do something, it gives us a lot more of skills for ourselves as well. Sharing video translations in the local language, absolutely. Sharing everything possible to be sure that the client gets the pictures, the videos, and then asking questions, absolutely afterwards. 
Chris, absolutely. Sometimes the children are more literate than their parents and help them to learn, but we always want to caution against relying heavily on the children um, and encouraging those parents that they can learn. They, they have the ability to do hard things. They've gone through so much in their resettlement journey. Um, we don't want to too much impact that power dynamic between the parent and the child and give too much reliance on that child. Um, one thing that we will talk about with clients, especially if the, for example, the client and the child both say, it's no problem, my child can trans can interpret. And the child says, no problem, I can interpret. But we want to remind, what will you do when that when that child is at school? What will you do if that child is not with you? You as the parent, we also, we also need to encourage them that uh, independence and not relying on the child. Excuse me while I get myself off track here. Absolutely, Elena, including flyers in the client's language in those CO packets that we give out, sharing the app beforehand with the language interpreter so that, oh, with applicants with hearing difficulties, absolutely adding another layer to the difficulty of, of CO. Let me save my screen here really quick so that I keep these great ideas that we have shared. Um, I want to just take a quick look back here. Coley absolutely doing hands-on practice using visual pictures, 100%. I'm gonna clear my screen off here and I want to give you another thought. I want to give us another situation to think about. If my slideshow will advance. There we go, okay. If we think about our CO sessions or our times working with clients or applicants, often we have three or four different language groups attending at the same time. I've already seen some things in the chat that would help with this when Elena shares um, including flyers in the client's language in those CO packets. That's a great strategy for those learners who have no digital literacy. It's also a great strategy for those times that we have multiple different language groups attending. Feel free to jump into the chat, continue to share ideas. Colin, I see that your microphone is open. Did you wanna jump in with something? Oh no, you're totally fine. I just wanted to make sure that I, I caught you if, you if you wanted to jump in. What else could we do when we have those CO sessions with lots of different language groups in them? I'm just gonna take a look back through the chat with these other ideas that people have shared for the last scenario. Absolutely, Erin, sharing the videos in English, pausing to allow some time for interpretation, having learners follow along on their personal devices or laptops or iPads, maybe that your organization has available, um, a computer lab that maybe your organization has a video available, playing the English video, pausing for interpretation. Coley, I love this, providing picture sets within the different languages, showing the animated video without the language, again, so that they can understand those key concepts. Sometimes when we do have those large groups of languages, it can be um, really difficult to manage the sound level, right? You are sharing the information possibly in English, and then we have three or four different small groups interpreting and sharing in their own languages. Thinking about your physical space, how are you having your learners sit? in the space? Are they facing each other? Are they facing you? Where is your interpreter located? These are all things to, to navigate as we move into these large groups with, with multiple languages. Definitely sharing the fact sheet, those PDFs in the specific local language, and then giving some homework, asking them to watch the language specific video, 
sending out the video link, maybe as an in an app or in messaging, you could download that audio podcast and share. I've heard of people sharing those audio podcasts through WhatsApp or through um, some type of messaging program. Let me share my save my screen here. Absolutely, Hanak, if you have some headphones available, <laughs> that sound can become really, really overwhelming when you have three or four different language groups interpreting and talking all in different spaces of the class. I'm gonna clear my screen off here. I've got two more thoughts for us to, to think about before we move on to, to towards the end of our webinar. We've actually spoken about some of these things already I've seen in the chat, but we also have such a wide variety of digital literacy skills, right? Some of our clients are able to maybe teach the class on digital literacy. Some of our clients have possibly never seen or used a laptop, a smartphone, an iPad. Um, what thoughts would you have about using resources from Settle In for that wide variety of clients, uh, literacy, digital literacy skills? Um, I'm going to go back up here and find a note from, I think it was Erin earlier who had the suggestion to have those with higher digital literacy help to facilitate or teach those with lower digital literacy. It's lost in the chat, but there we've got it, Tony Pugh teaching, absolutely, uh, encouraging those who do have the digital literacy skills to demonstrate, encouraging them to see that as a strength, right? Pull out that strength core. We, we talk a lot about strengths-based approach, encouraging those clients or applicants who maybe they don't see that as a strength. Well, yeah, everybody knows how to use a phone. Not true. This is something that you are good at and you can help to guide and teach maybe your fellow um, immigrants, your fellow newcomers how to do. What are some of the challenges? I'm gonna pop this question up here maybe to get your brain, your, your minds thinking a little bit about this. Um, what are some challenges that we might have with the clients who have high digital literacy skills? Um, I taught for almost 10 years with adult immigrants. And so I, have this in my mind, thinking about those clients, my, my former students who were very highly skilled and some of the maybe struggles that we had, that I had with them. Um, but I don't wanna to share a bunch of things. To, I would like you to, to maybe uh, share some thoughts if you have some. Yeah, Elena, I love that you, you are putting that in. Um, the Settle In app is very user-friendly for clients who have low digital literacy. This is actually on one of my last slides before we close out our webinar today, is that the, the benefit of Settle In is that clients who have very low digital literacy can use the app to learn how to swipe or learn where to click, learn how to use the device at the same time that they are using the Settle In app. Erin, this is exactly the, the struggle I was thinking of, um, is that clients who have high digital literacy might feel that those sessions are not relevant. They know it. Why do I have to sit through this cultural orientation session? I know this information. This is where then those help center articles, maybe the Facebook page posts, the YouTube videos, might be able to give some extended information yeah, you really do know a lot already about this topic. Let's see if we can find you another video on YouTube, the Settle In YouTube channel to watch while we do this over here with another group of clients. Absolutely, Hanak, using volunteers to support the digital literacy, helping with interpreting, 
but also giving that self-reliance, right? Making sure that those clients, those applicants are able to feel more comfortable doing these things for themselves. Absolutely, Kathleen. Um, we do see that on, on occasion, those who come over as newcomers with higher levels of education might feel like, now I, I was at this higher position. Now, maybe I feel like I've been pushed very far down. I'm possibly feeling depressed. Helping out other people who are also newcomers can push up those, those feelings and help improve that feeling of um, empowerment, right? I'm gonna save my screen here and then I've got one more thought for us to, to chat about before we kind of start to wrap up. Um, 90 minutes always sounds like a long webinar and then 90 minutes always feels like it goes by in about five seconds. The last thing I'd love us to think about this morning is about remote cultural orientation or remote consultations, chats, conversations with clients, with applicants. So if we are managing CO sessions through Zoom or through Teams, maybe one client or two clients, what thoughts would you have about using Settle In virtually? I'm gonna add my follow-up here questions while you're thinking. I love to see some notes coming through. I'm just gonna add my follow-up questions here to keep to keep your thinking, um, your thoughts flowing. Absolutely using Settle In desktop version to go through lessons together in the client's language. If it's not available in the client's language, using those videos, sharing those videos um, without sound just to guide the discussion. Absolutely, Erin. Tony, sharing your screen. Shamir navigating through that website together 100%. Yeah, absolutely, Hillary. You are demonstrating how to use Settle In while you're sharing your screen. If your client in that remote session is a little more digitally literate, maybe they navigate and share their screen back to you. Doing breakout sessions, absolutely, if clients are more digitally literate. Playing videos, allowing for discussion. Using the quizzes to guide that whole group discussion. Yasmin, oh, I love this. Using the text as a script for speaking in English because you as the provider are used to giving the sessions in Arabic. And Yasmin, I'm going to steal this, this phrase. Sometimes the words fall off 100%. This happens to all of us who, who have a second language, right? Those words just disappear. So for yourself as the CO provider, using that text as a script so that you, you keep yourself on track. Fabulous, fabulous. I'm just going to scroll myself up in my chat and see what else I might be missing from the, the conversation. Elena, absolutely. If you are screen sharing, maybe the client is following along on their phone or on their app if they are able to. Coley, do some practical exercises on how to operate. Maybe you are guiding verbally and encouraging, facilitating the client or the applicant to navigate the website. I'm gonna save my, save my screen here to keep these ideas. Please do, please, please do keep some ideas coming through the chat. Um, I promise to you after this webinar is over, 
we go back through the entire chat. We will pull out all of these ideas, put them together into this PowerPoint when we share it out to you. So every idea that has been shared in the chat will come to you in the follow-up PowerPoint. Let me clear my screen here. We are getting to the end of the webinar. We've got about 10 minutes left. So I do want to ask my core staff now to take a look at the Q&A while I go through a few more pieces here, and then we can come to any, uh, any points from the Q&A that need to be addressed. Um, one phrase that a coworker at CORE has used is this concept of a double track agenda. We talked a little bit about this earlier that using settle in also is a chance for newcomers to improve digital literacy. This is this idea that settle in can teach the concepts about the United States, but settle in can also help to teach how to use an app, how to navigate a website how to change the language on a website, how to look through the settings on an app or the settings on a website to change the language. Settle in has this double benefit of being helpful for learning an app at the same time as learning the content or reinforcing that content about the life in the United States. I do want to just make a quick one minute um, encouragement that Recently, CORE has developed and released a new domestic cultural orientation curriculum. This curriculum is heavily based on settle in resources, incorporates the videos, images, quizzes, app exercises, and more. Um, for our overseas folks, we encourage you to use that new curriculum, that settle, the Road Ahead curriculum, as a reference looking at how Settle In could be integrated into your comprehensive curriculum as well. Um, Karin, would you just pop that link for the domestic curriculum into the chat? Again, this webinar is not focused on the, the curriculum, but it's something we like to, to just kind of encourage because it is a new valuable resource that CORE has released. Um, the curriculum PowerPoints are currently in the process of being uh, translated. So translated PowerPoints will soon be available for uh, clients. I did mention this just briefly earlier today that we do have a lot of promotional materials, signs and flyers that your organization can use to advertise Settle In. These could be shared, of course, with newcomers, but these could also be shared with local organizations, other stakeholders in your community who might um, want to put these flyers up in their space. Maybe you have a job service locally in your domestic organization, uh, maybe an adult basic education program where you could also put this information out and then more newcomers are able to find that, that information. These resources are available in multiple languages. They have a wide variety of sizes, very, very minimal text, and includes QR codes, which directly allow the downloading of, um, which directly link to the website. One thing that we will be sharing out to you in the uh, follow-up email is this very brief PowerPoint, uh, sorry, this very brief PDF, which explains a lot of the information we just talked about over the last 90 minutes in a one page format. The idea here is we as CO providers are so busy. I can't remember what languages are available on the website compared to Facebook, compared to the app. This is a quick one page that could be printed out next to your desk and you can say, ah, yes, Burmese is available on the website. Burmese is available on the app but I don't have that on Facebook as a quick, a quick reference guide and comparison. This is also another resource that could be shared with staff in your organization to promote Settle In and promote the usage of Settle In. This is not intended for newcomers. This is really intended for us as service providers to um, quickly 
gather all of that information uh, so that it's in an easy to find format. The second page of that PDF includes about 30 ideas on how to use Settle In, most of which we've already shared throughout this, throughout this webinar in the chat or um, as core advice. But it's, a, again, a quick resource that will come to you in the follow-up email. All right, we have about five or six minutes left. I do notice um, that there was something, a question in our Teams chat that we want to address. Um, Karen or Ella, do you have that one ready to go? Yeah, I can I can uh, answer it. And I really want to just shout out to... Um, Kathleen here for being vulnerable and uh, letting us know that our websites are overwhelming. Um, but Kathleen has asked here about the CO Resource Exchange website, which is different from Settle In, has a ton of information, and that it can be a bit overwhelming. And she's kind of asking, um, where, where do we start uh, when we're looking at these resources? So Kathleen, thank you so much for this, this question. I really want to um, uh, sharing your frustration. We are growing as a team here at CORE and we're adding new funding and new resources. Um, and so we are currently in the process of looking at all of our digital, digital resources and making some updates. Um, so first I just wanna share that this website that Amy has here on her screen, thank you, Amy, is directed towards you as individuals working in resettlement. This is where you, will, you can go to build your knowledge, skills and attitudes to be able to support newcomers as they are um, resettling in the United States. And so this is where you can go to learn more about Settle In, where you can learn more about how to uh, find activities that you can teach on the COONIs. You can access um, webinars and courses, um, all sorts of, of different types of information. The Settle In website is really aimed for those who, for towards refugees, right? And so um, this is a separate digital platform because we want it to be put in the hands of refugees to help them take control of their own learning. So like I said, the CO Resource Exchange can help you navigate the Settle In website, help you incorporate those resources. If you're looking for just a place to start, I would start with the Settle In website. And if you are domestic, I would start with the Road Ahead curriculum. And then from there, um, go back to our CO Resource Exchange website and it's laid out in a way where you can build upon your own learning. So about to learn to teach. And so as you are using Settle In and as you're using um, and teaching CO, you can build upon your skills. So Amy, I, I think you might've had something to add there as I was talking. And so I, I, I turned it back over to you. Um, and again, Kathleen, thank you so much for the vulnerability of this question. Um, no, I think I just wanted to kind of echo what, what you have shared as well, Ella, that we understand these, these resources, there's a lot, right? There's a lot of resources available. Um, as Ella was saying, Settle In is our newcomer facing resource where the CO Resource Exchange is meant for us as providers, you as service providers. Um, and if you kind of start over on the left-hand side and then move towards the right, you've got more information about cultural orientation places that you can learn more, and then materials to help you teach. These are really our, our, our two biggest here are the learn and the teach. Um, fabulous. I'm so glad, Ella, that you caught that question from Kathleen. And absolutely, I, I echo Ella in saying thank you, Kathleen, for sharing that question. It's a common, a common issue that we know and we are, we are working behind the scenes on. Um, Colin or my other core fellow staff members, do we have anything else from the Q&A that we would like to, to address or mention or questions we can answer before we close out here at the end of our webinar? Yeah, we have one more question um, that is from Kathleen as well. Um, she asks, we find a bit we have, we're a bit under pressure since we're required to do CO within a certain number of days, like 30 days or 90 days, and also testing. Is there some way to better manage those requirements? Amy, do you mind if I field this question? Is that yep, okay? go ahead, Ella. Uh, Kathleen, we 100% we hear you. So CORE is a technical advising unit for cultural orientation, and we 
uh, work with the Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, um, and, and they end up determining the requirements for cultural orientation. But in terms of your latter question, there are discussions right now happening across um, leadership and resettlement to better manage just reception and placement requirements. Um, and so I encourage you to talk to your internal leadership or your national resettlement agency if you're interested in knowing what's happening in those conversations. Um, but there is an acknowledgement that there is a lot going on right now in reception and placement and in resettlement and a desire to better manage the requirements that that are, are happening. Um, I can share that it's, it's some of the national resettlement agencies do have additional requirements on how CO is delivered um, in addition to the cooperative agreement. And that again is a, de a decision within your internal agency. So if you have specific questions on requirements, where they're coming from, I do really encourage you to, to reach out to your, your, your leadership, uh, but 100% validate how you're feeling about this. And this is definitely something being addressed on the, on the leadership level. You're very welcome. Thanks so much, Ella, for, for jumping in there. It's always always very much appreciated. Um, I do see one last note that I wanted to, to just mention quick from um, Hanak in the Q&A about more resources on mental health. So all of the resources that we have on the main settling page are focused on the cultural orientation, objectives, and indicators. Those items that refugees are expected to be able to say and do by the end of their initial resettlement period. And right now, there is nothing focused on mental health in those COONIs. However, we do have additional information under maybe the Help Center or on the Facebook page that comes from a different funding stream that has a little bit of a mental health focus. Uh, but that's why you might not see a topic specific to what you need on that on the settle in page. Um, but like Ella has put also in there, uh, please always send us an email, coresourceexchange at rescue.org, and we can help to get some, some resources pulled together for you. We are at the very last minute here. Again, it always goes so fast. Um, I would love, 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 we would absolutely appreciate if you will uh, take a moment here as you close out of Zoom to complete the post survey. Um, I'm gonna have Karin put that uh, link in the chat for you. When you close out of Zoom, it also should pop up automatically for you, but please do fill out that post survey before you are, you are closing out. That data helps us out a lot to improve our um, technical assistance for in the future. Also, we've mentioned it a few times, but definitely subscribe to our newsletter. If you are um, wanting to keep up with things like new settle-in content, upcoming live events, the newsletter actually is going to have an issue go out today that's going to talk about some new resources about vaccines and vaccination created under a special group of funding from um, NRC RIM and a health partnership there. So definitely subscribe to that newsletter to keep up to date on upcoming um, items. 